So welcome back to Tech Dudes Weekly. Uh, we, in a uh, previous video, had talked about a little bit of a change to the channel uh, and talking about how we're going to have a long form podcast and uh, then have other videos throughout the week, uh, some unboxings, some software reviews, stuff like that. So uh, I think if you look throughout the rest of this week, Dave's going to have a few things coming out for a few unboxings. I'm going to try to get off my butt and actually do some stuff to help Dave out. But in the min in term here, we wanted to just do our general podcast. So we're going to have these long form podcasts uh, for folks that just want to listen. You got some drive time and you need something to zone out in. Nothing. Uh, hopefully, you know this won't put you to sleep. Nothing. But uh, at behind the wheel, but you'll be able to, uh, you know, get some tech information out of it. Nothing. So if you are feeling drowsy, pull over, get some rest, and then turn the podcast back on. Nothing. So we've been known to have that effect on certain people and animals. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So with that said, what are we talking about this week? I think we were going to chat a little bit about. Um, you know, we're at a weird inflection point with some of the hardware that we own. Um, in particular, we're both uh, longtime Apple people. And I, if you've watched any of our shows, you probably already know that. Um, and we're both at the uh, having like M1 series Macintoshes and M1 series iPad Pros. And now we're at that weird inflection point where if we wait for another iteration, um, the trading value is going to plummet huge by the end of this year. So now sometime in the spring, beginning of summer, it's the time to trade those in either to a Best Buy or online or even Apple Direct and use some of that credit towards buying the latest and greatest of where we're headed to. Normally, as an Apple user, I would say, OK, Apple, what do you got next in the lineup? And let's move yeah. over to that and throw a couple hundred dollars off of older equipment. I'm not there anymore. Um, yeah. Apple's become iterative, not innovative. And we're seeing other manufacturers out there doing more innovative stuff um, outside of the uh, Apple ecosystem. So, I mean, you know, Dave, you just bought or not bought, but you built a new uh, machine altogether and then kind of taking even a separate turn and uh, saying maybe custom is the way to take a look again. Yes, yeah, so I've built machines for God knows how long now. And, you know, like you said, we were both uh, kind of the Apple guys for a long, long time. And I, I don't understand where they're going, what they're trying to do. Um, and I just, I got tired of it. The main thing that was tying me to Apple, and let me preface this, and you'll kind of back me up on this too, is we still use iPhones. We still have iPads. Um, we, you know, iTunes, iWatch, that type of stuff. I'm going to call the the peripherals, if you will, not the the mainstay, you know, the MacBooks, the Mac, uh, the studio. I had a studio and a MacBook and, and had is the opportune word there. Um, everything was there. I never saw a need to upgrade from an M1 to an M2 to an M3. Um, and there were reasons why M1 to M2, those chips were still suffering some of the same issues. But the last, I'll say the last vestige of hope staying in that ecosystem was we were still using uh, Final Cut Pro. We were still using to a degree iMovie. Again, we're not huge, you know, we don't do a whole lot of super duper editing and 8k 6k stuff like that i mean we did mainly do 1080p and 4k i mean that's just kind of how things are for youtube but i kept looking at it and the value proposition is no more m uh, m1s m2s m3s don't hold resale value and and it's not that i'm looking just for pure for pure resale value but you pay a premium um, Dave 2D did a video the other day talking about the premium for upgrading from eight gig to 16 gig of memory in any of the new Macs. It's, I mean, I won't use the word extortion to a degree, but it's, it's crazy what you can do in the PC world versus the other. Now, the flip side of that too is, is that with some of the new surface stuff that Microsoft's coming out, I'm hoping they don't sort everything to an SOC on their arm stuff and make it not upgradable, but we'll, we'll see. But built a new rig and, and new what I'm gonna call is new. Um, I don't want to build a 14th gen right now because Microsoft, excuse me, not Microsoft, but Intel's uh, putting out their NPUs on their ultra chips. Um, they did a whole new naming convention change and they don't have ultra chips for desktops. They got two ultras for um, laptops, but not desktops. So I went back to AMD and I built a last gen and AM4 um, a 5,800X, um, I, I got, a, it's a pretty much a complete gigabyte system, um, 64 gig of Ram, water cooled, um, a 4070, uh, video card in it. 
and it runs everything freaking spectacular. And I don't have to worry about it. it I'm not worried about resale value on it or anything else. It, it doesn't make any sense to me why Apple's going down this road. And we're not trying to bash them. It just, when you get into the same iterative approach, like you were talking about with like Intel did, oh, we're going to do, you know, a 15th gen, a 14th, what changed? 10%. Okay. Why do I need to change? I'm not pushing what I have now. 90% of the problems we see out there are due to poor coding and software. So again, I don't need to keep throwing hardware at a problem. Now I've taken another step and I've disavowed Apple from my computer list, if you will. I got rid of my studio. I got rid of my MacBook and I'm solely on windows machines. I have a windows laptop and a windows desktop, but that's all I run PC in my house now. I think, you know, it's, you know, you made, it made a very good point. And I think is that there, there is a transition and again, we're looking for innovation and yeah. if I'm going to put money towards it, I either want my money to either go further, nothing meaning that, you know, I'm not, I don't have a eight gig of Ram upgrade from eight to 16 shouldn't cost me 200 bucks. Yep. Um, and I should be able to start to say, okay, what is this platform now supporting that's innovative? And we're seeing a little bit more out of that with Microsoft. And uh, granted, I, I don't like being co-piloted to death. And I like every, I mean, look at their last event. They talked about their Surface laptops and we'll bring those up in a minute. And I think as well as, you know, the Pro series. And out of the 50 minutes they were on stage, 40 of that was about co-pilot. Okay, I get it. You know, AI, everything. Okay, fantastic. However, nothing. Um, as much as I don't want to have to talk about AI all the time, because it's now becoming, you know, more and more ubiquitous. Um, it is the innovative point in 2024. Yeah. And Apple has only come out with, yeah, we got some great stuff to show you. What does that mean? Nothing, you know, when? End of the year? Two weeks? We don't, Nobody has any idea. We can't even get a date on the new iPads. Thing. So it's to me no, they did they did the last air up the the m last three m uh m3 upgrades were just a press wrap, press release that's it oh yeah there, there was nothing special about it we're going to see the same thing with the ipad too i mean we all i think everybody knows what the new ipads are going to look like we're just waiting for when are you actually going to ship one we all yeah. know they're going to be oled you know for the pros you know we all know there's be a couple minor sizing changes the air is going to get a larger one thinner uh, bevel again yeah, and we all know they're going to be you know a couple hundred dollars more expensive than the current line. Yep. And for me, again, with what we started this out saying was we came coming from an M1 iPad because I have a 2020. Yeah, I got uh, the same one. You know, and uh, you know if you have an M2, you're it's, this is even I think hits home even further. Why would I upgrade to an M3? Smaller bezels? I don't care about that. If anything, it makes it flimsier, and I'd be afraid to break it. I don't want it to be thinner. I want you to tell me it has longer battery life. Yep. Nothing, you know, there, there's nothing innovative about it. Nothing. It's it's another iterative upgrade to the hardware without anything software to back it up. Because when they say, well, AI is coming with iOS 18. Yeah, when? but look, look how they're doing that. Oh, yeah. I mean, what well, they're going out. We can't build it ourselves. We're going to go to use Google. Yep, okay, they got to use Gemini to do it. So what innovation is that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, do I agree? You know, Google, they probably have a stronger AI play right now. Um, you know, Apple should have been there. That's yeah. the thing that's not being talked about is that that's great that they're going to partner with this and they're going to have small, you know, maybe the small uh, language models built into the edge, edge device and stuff like that. To try to unstupefy Siri. Yeah, yeah don't get me started with Siri. Sorry, sorry, that's like, negative. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's fine and all. And then, but again, who's got the innovation there? Google. Yep. Nothing. They're gonna, you know, put lipstick on the pig. Nothing and put it on the iPhone. Nothing. Um, again, it's a so what. Nothing. It's the same. I guess it's the same reason I have an iPhone 13 and I haven't gone to a 15 and mm -hmm. I don't even care about the 16 coming out. I have done zero reading on it because nothing's I can changed. already tell you what it's going to be. No. Oh, we made changed. Yeah, new camera. And, you know, the screen might be slightly larger because the bezels got smaller. You know, there may be some more RAM. But there's only so small we can get. I mean, we're already having to put cases around stuff to protect it from what using it. I mean, I, I don't understand that. We've went through these cycles of it's got to be stupid small, then it's got to be stupid big. I mean, here's yeah. a good example: is why have why hasn't Apple upgraded the uh, iPad Mini? 
Well, I think, think right there, it's the same reason now we're bleeding into the iPhone range. Now, and a- Apple hurt themselves when they when they didn't want to do the two in one thing. Now, and I'm saying Microsoft executed that beautifully with an i uh, with the Surface Pro yeah. thing, but they did a decent job at the two in one. It it wasn't the best of anything across the board, but it was okay across the board. Now Apple's got it, so and you know I fell into it. I, I have oh, a Ma- MacBook, I have an iPad, I have an iPhone. Uh, it keeps going on. Well. I'm not there anymore. I don't see the value anymore. I used to see the value. I don't see it anymore because half of the time I'm sitting on the couch now, I'm not reaching for my iPad anymore. I just, my phone's big enough. It's fine. You know, I can do the things I want to do on the couch, read a few things, and then, you know, that's it. Um, And if you make the screen even bigger, you know, God forbid, they actually get to foldable someday. There's no place for the iPad anymore. The iPad to Mm -hmm. me has become a why. And, you can't sell it as a, comp- a laptop replacement because how long have we heard that? Oh God. Yeah. It'll you replace know? it. I mean, they, but they, if they try to do that and they have in so many subtle ways, which jobs never wanted, no. there was rumors around um, them making a touchscreen Mac. I'm like, why would you do that either? That just kills your iPad. Yeah. I mean, it just, and it I've doesn't tried, make any sense. I, I tried for the longest time to make an iPad and maybe, maybe it's our demographic. I, I don't know. But I, it's not a computer to me. It's a media consumption device. Until you r- run into the, you know, this is not a real operating system or nope, that doesn't run through the browser quite properly thing or the app doesn't quite match up to what's the desktop version of the same software. You know, it, you always questionably run into, is it great when you're maybe on the road and you need to do something quick thing, or you don't want to carry a ton of stuff thing, on a, you know, a two day trip somewhere? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you know, the laptops have gotten so light now and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Give me a light laptop in my phone or, you know what, even I think what's the other laptop you have a predator knowing, which is, yeah. you know, uh, it's, predator. it's not yeah. heavy, but I mean, it's, it's not was, light, no. knowing, but at the same time you can pop the back off of it, add Ram, mm-hmm. add a uh, new hard drive, stuff like that. There are upgrades you can do to certain the gaming laptops in particular. Knowing, and it becomes somewhat attractive and because they're somewhere between the desktop and the, the laptop and you know when they say oh it's heavy it's six pounds i mean come on yeah I'm a, you know a six pound laptop used to be the thin thing you know years ago nothing so it's not that bad nothing so to me i'd rather carry something that has a little bit more longevity where if i want to upgrade to 32 gigs of ram you know i'm not paying probably more than 150 bucks yeah and that's on yeah, the high that's the quadruple the base ram yeah. And that's one thing, reason I'm hoping Microsoft really focuses on the surface. Um, I'm still, the, the jury's still out on whether or not the ARM version, because they've tried this before, whether or not the ARM version is going to be viable, because I saw an article the other day talking about Qualcomm says games just should work. Well, nothing just should work. It either does or it doesn't. Microsoft has to get this right, especially in the, in the ARM side to make this work. The, the, the funny thing is Windows has typically been driven. I mean, you know, I, I think if you look at it, the, the two areas that have driven technology over the years, nothing have been, you know, game gaming really, nothing. And, yeah. you know, I would say less desirable sites. No, I'm not gonna throw it out there because this is supposed to be somewhat PC, <laughs> nothing. But that's really what's driven technology over the years. So, if, but if you look at gaming in particular, this is where, you know, Windows shines by far, right? Yeah. I mean. Nobody's looked at a Mac and just thought gaming, you know, no. And when you look at Windows, the nice thing about it is that they've they've embraced that. But it is going to take a while before developers in the gaming world, which I think is where, again, where the innovation is driven. Because that's where your GPUs are and all the (laughs) NVIDIA stuff that's come out. And then um, that's going to take a while to transition away from Intel. Okay, yeah. they can emulate all they want in ARM. No, that's great. But if you tell a gamer that they're dropping 30 frames per second because of an emulation tier, they're not yeah. going to use it. Nope. And, and you know, I, that's why I'm, I'm thankful on the surface. And, I, and again, I want to see what comes out in June on the consumer side. The, the one thing out of this thing that I've never really liked about Microsoft, oh, I hate to say that the one product in the surface line I didn't like, and people love it, was the surface laptop. I yeah. understand they were branding their laptop, but the tablet or the two-in-one was always my preference on those. 
Oh, I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent because I love the idea of being able to pull the keyboard off and, it, and then sit on the couch with a, as a content consumer. I mean, I think that's where we were just saying earlier that, you know, is it the best of all worlds? No, no, but it's good across a lot of different, you know, worlds. Um, the Surface Laptop, that one's interesting only for the fact that it's, uh, if you're looking for a true competitor to a MacBook Air, it's yeah. a good competitor for that. No, remember, you don't forget, you got your Copilot button on there. Yeah, there it is. You can see a little circle around it over there. Um, yeah, uh, it's Copilot. Um, <laughs> yeah. But again, you know, you have to give Microsoft credit. They went all in on it. Nothing, and you know, this is the year of AI. Nothing, yeah. and um, a lot of their competitors are just lagging behind. Yeah, lagging. The, the the one thing I saw on the on the surface for the I think they call it service for business. Um, yeah. They're charging. Oh yeah, there's your there's your prices. Yeah. Um, that's the laptop business or prices. And I think now you can't, yeah. since it's business, you have to buy either from Microsoft or, or a, um, you can uh, buy it from a large bar, yeah. you know, some of them, they, they have it and everything, um, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, you look at some of these prices here. I mean, let's just look at the, like the third one down at 1600 bucks. It's, not, it's a 13 and a half inch screen. It's a core ultra. Um, but yeah, it is a five, 16 gig of RAM 512, but I would want to be at a core seven at least. Yeah. And so the first one I would want is the seven with 16 gigs. And I don't even see it on here. Is there a seven with 16 gigs? Yeah, it's, it's the one right below the i5. Yeah, it's 256 on the storage, which I'm not too concerned about. Yeah, if they leave that panel on there where you could change the, uh, the yeah, card if you, could do, if you could do an SSD upgrade on or an M.2 on upgrade on, it'd be fine. But, but I think I would want this guy here i'd want to be in the 18 or the 15 inch uh screen i don't know that i would want a 13 and a half inch screen if i in a normal laptop yeah well i mean but think about it though i mean for uh for mobility i mean this is one thing i like about the um the docks you've got the surface docks you can put surface docks in a monitor around your house yep you're golden yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That, that is a good point. So, I mean, again, you're at 16, 1700 bucks. This is breaching the idea of, you know, being closer to probably the MacBook Pro. Yeah. Um, I don't understand why they didn't do 15 inch versions of the uh, 32 gig for the 15 inch. I, I don't, I don't understand that, but I guess the price point would have been crazy or something. I don't know. These down here. I mean, you're still at 2,500 bucks. Yeah, I mean they're they're up there. Um, I mean, you know, it, it, it's a great laptop. It's light. It has a couple of Thunderbolt ports now. Um, it has the, yeah, the uh, Thunderbolt the, four, which makes a big difference. Yeah, Thunderbolt four. Um, you know, they they do have the uh, the Surface connector, which is you know their version of like a MagSafe you know charger. Um, you know, which works nicely with their dock. The Surface dock is it works flawlessly. I think I have two or three around the house because my wife used to work for Microsoft. And didn't you say that they now allow third parties to make that um, Surface uh, charger as well? They do. Yep. Which they didn't for a long time. Yeah, they, I mean, they're I mean, they're knockoffs. And I, you know, some are you know cheaper than others. And I think, so I would still you know be careful what you buy. And I think yeah. you know some of those can end up harming your laptop. But you know, if you're Hey, I'm on a budget and I need a you know cheap charger. It'll work. Now, granted, it's Thunderbolt four port, so you should be able to reverse charge through a, a standard Thunderbolt port as well. Nothing, so um, maybe it's not as necessary. But also, you're taking up a port doing it. Um, but yeah, these are these are nice laptops. I mean, they, they you know, Microsoft did a nice job of that. I mean, the question is though, when you're looking at a you know two thousand dollar laptop in the Core Ultra 732, even with the 256 one there, it's, you know, $2,000. Um, you can look at a gaming laptop and probably spend less because you can upgrade the RAM and the hard drive yourself pretty easily on a lot of, on a lot of them. Be careful because sometimes they solder the, m m the memory on the motherboard. Yeah, um, and that's what I'm hoping Microsoft doesn't follow suit with, whether did. it's on the, the yeah. Intel side or the ARM side. Yeah, I think the only thing they, if they left that panel in there that got introduced with the Surface Pro 7 Plus, yeah, um, then you'll at least be able to upgrade the storage. The memory, you're never going to be able to upgrade because that's just not a thing uh, with Microsoft. They soldered that onto the board. Nothing, but, you know, if you, again, if you look at some of the third party ones there, the Acers, the uh, you know, Asus, you know, uh, um, some of those, they 
you know, there's countless videos on YouTube. And then you pop off the back and start adding your own memory. If you're, you know, again, be careful. You know, you can bork your machine really easily. Yeah. Uh, and, and if I had to get one of these, it would be to your point, like an ultra seven, I'd want 32 gig of Ram just because it's windows. Um, but I'm torn whether or not I would, I would pay that because they're charging a premium too. Um, whether I would pay from, for it to go to 256 to a half terabyte on that device and just, or, or just do kind of like we did in the, in the, um, in the Apple world where they put everything in iCloud or, or Windows world where we put everything in uh, OneDrive. Yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, is Microsoft and Apple going to be the inexpensive version of either any newer machines? No, they're no. not. Um, and to be honest, again, if we go back to the iterative versus innovative, <laughs> Acer, Asus, uh, Lenovo, in many cases, um, you know, Dell on the, you know, Alienware side, um, even the XPS series, they have some very compelling PCs now that I think will not only perform, well, obviously they perform similar because it's same hardware inside, but they've given some very interesting form factors. Um, yeah. I can't remember which one of them is, Acer or Asus, one of the two, uh, made a dual screen OLED 91. Um Yep. Yeah, that was in their Zephyr series, I think. I could be wrong, but they'll, yeah. me, they'll tell me in the comments whether I'm right or wrong. Yeah, it was something like that. But, you know, there's some very interesting stuff coming out there. Um, and they're more price competitive. Like the dual screen one I noticed uh, was probably somewhere coming in around 1600 And that was, you know, with 16 gigs of RAM and stuff like this. So, you know, very nice laptop. Doesn't have a lot of upgradability, but you're buying it more for the, hey, it's got two screens. Um, so, Depending on what you want to do, I think the you know if you, innovation, it's on the Windows side, which is really weird to say. Yeah, I was when they changed the head of who was running the Surface division. I was really worried, and I still am to a degree, because we still haven't seen the consumer side of this. What well, was like this is the business side, so hopefully prices are going to be a little bit better. And yeah, I'm I'm going to be priced because you kind of get trained in the Apple world of Apple is always going to be premium and nothing else is. Mm -hmm. um, I think Microsoft has kind of changed that to a degree. Um, I'm still, I think that didn't on the, um, on the surface, um, the two in one, didn't they, uh, they changed the upgrade of the keyboard on that one along with the surface, uh, well, along with the, um, yeah, they, they had a, um, uh, the slimline pen and they had a couple yep. of different uh service keyboards that were really nice that's the other thing is you end up having to pay for that oh you want a laptop you want a keyboard with your laptop <laughs> yeah, with, with a co-pilot button yeah <laughs> the co-pilot button uh well we'll throw in the co-pilot button for free if you buy the keyboard for 200 bucks <laughs> you know so I, I just want to show you this dave so i was looking at you know things i can't afford and uh where was it so i went down here on best buy site and I was looking at yeah, we're we're kind of Best Buy junkies to a degree, but we are getting a micro center here, hopefully soon by summer, and that's going to be a whole different series of videos of two grown men acting like children. Yes, there should be. Oh, here we go. So I just brought up the here because you can get the Ultra series on a laptop. Yep. So this is a 14th generation Ultra, which means it has the NPU now for you know if you want to use your Copilot. Yeah, and it's the H series, which is their performance series. But I was looking at this now. Granted, it's sold out. But look at what you get. I'm a big fan of MSI. You know, I like MSI as well. This thing is crazy thin. I mean, look at this. Yep. These are crazy thin. They have a couple of Thunderbolt ports. I mean, these are nice looking machines. Nothing. Um, great refresh rates, especially if you're a gamer. But more importantly, sixteen hundred bucks. And looks what it's putting in. One hundred sixty-five hertz. This is you know an Boy, FHD screen. Yep. Just fine, especially if you're a gamer. Nothing. 4060 one terabyte with 16 gigs of ram on a core ultra 7 14th gen and this thing is crazy thin yep and it still has active cooling so it's not going to throttle or anything do anything weird i mean we just saw that with the you know the macbook air now i'm comparing this to a macbook air but you close the lid on a macbook air and that's oh you can have multiple screens yeah if you want to kill your performance because it can't get rid of the heat nothing so i mean and you can't run with the lid open and run two two additional monitors go figure uh, yeah crazy stupid nothing so this you know again i'm not advocating go out and buy msi nothing but there's some nice stuff in here you know i mean there's no value back, to this machine mm -hmm. 
you know, and then again, if you want something where you can, you know, start playing around a little bit more, you know, Gigabyte makes some really nice machines. Yeah, I'm a Gigabyte fan too. So the no, Predator series. Uh, I've had the... these forever. Now, granted, this is going back, this is a 12th gen. So, I mean, there, there's other ones out there, but 700 bucks. And I know for a fact, you can pull the bottom off of this thing and add RAM, change the hard drive. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say I know for a fact. It did, the previous generation that I own, because I have a 1060 in mine, mine's really old. It's a 10th gen processor. I was able to pull off the back and do that. So, well, I did on the uh, on the 16 inch uh, Predator. I have I popped the I popped the back plate, upgraded a 32 gig of RAM, yep. and uh, added a two terabyte uh, Samsung. And that uh, that was the Neo Pro. 16, right? If I yeah. Right. Yep. Let me see here. And that, I that thing went on sale like two or three times, and I I couldn't pass it up. So here it is, not on sale. Do you have the i7, Dave? Yep. Okay. So this is basically your laptop now, right? Yeah, ex exactly. Yep. And I paid less than that for it. Yeah. I think we actually saw that go on sale closer to 800 bucks, right? It was nine something. Um, and then I add, I spent like another 150 bucks or maybe 200 and upgraded the memory and storage on it. And I'm 32 gig of RAM, three terabytes of M.2 SSD. I'm fine. Yeah. I mean, and it yeah. renders video like there's nothing tomorrow. No, you know, and the biggest complaint, well, they're heavy. Yeah, okay. Well, it's heavier knowing it's three pounds more than your lightest laptops. So double the laptop weight and the brick is, you know, the power brick is oomph. Yeah. Because, you know, again, it's powering an NVIDIA 4060. Duh. It's got a 300 and some odd watt um, uh, power brick, external power brick to it. So, yeah, but again, if you're not traveling as much with this thing and you're just putting on, a, for me, I put it on a laptop stand, open the lid as my sec second monitor, and then I have a primary monitor sitting next to it. And as long as I have a Thunderbolt dock, plug it in the side, done. Yep. So. And this has Thunderbolt 4, if I remember correctly, on it. Yes, I believe it does. Yeah. Yeah. And 13 gins weren't bad. I, I like those processors. Um, and it, it plays the games that I want to play just fine. I run an external monitor on it. I keep the lid down, no heat issues nothing and again i'm not advocating everybody go buy this laptop or anything we have no ties to best buy or anything else it yeah. was just a deal and i don't regret buying it no no exactly so i mean if you can find a previous generation for the right price i mean you can find some good stuff out there so but again it goes back to why we originally started this video going with 27 minutes ago now <laughs> nothing, um <laughs> innovation versus iteration nothing and if you are an apple user like we have been for years and years and years and you have the m1 series knowing you know what is your next jump I, I would love to hear in the comments if you're an m1 user are you considering changing platforms nothing, or are you just looking to go to m3 nothing and part of my reason for doing it now nothing, the reason i'm saying it is that i think i only have another six months before the i i lose the value on my m1 because if I wait for an M4 to surface, no pun intended, Microsoft, <laughs> if I wait for an M4 to come out in October, which is what I'm guessing, um, this That's M1 probably will be an announced date. Yeah. Yeah. I'll lose 20 to 50% of my trade in value knowing the second that thing hits the market. Well, that's the reason I got rid of the studio because they were getting ready. They're good. There's going to be an M3 studio. As soon as that went uh, mainstream, my studio would have went to crap. Yep. So no, I, I, I agree. I, it's, we're not bashing anything. Guys. This is just, it's a conversation we've had in our heads. We've had it, you know, multiple times. And you know, the other thing is we've, we've got a video series called good enough who also I'll throw out there, who's going to stay on their M one. Is it still good enough for you until Apple says, Nope, we're not doing updates anymore, which they will do. Yeah, I think we're definitely at that point. I mean, again, it's an inflection of are you trying to get some money out of your existing platform? If you are, it's probably the time to do it. If you're, again, the M series, you know, Apple ecosystem. And, you know, for us, I, I can't say that I'm dying to go down M3 because I'm not getting anything for the bang for the buck. I'd be upgrading and spending money on something that I don't know that I would realize any difference. Yep. Um, whereas I would jumping to a different ecosystem, you know, whether it be, into a gaming laptop or looking to try to score a deal on a surface or something like that. Um, I still want to see what the surface consumer side is going to be in June. We'll, we'll do more details on that when it comes out, but yeah. yeah. My, the only reason I don't think I'll wait for that to make a purchase myself is, you know, one, I have attention deficits knowing. So there's no way sure. I can wait that long knowing, but number two, um, 
I still think the arm on Windows needs an a, once it becomes a little more mainstream, it needs 12 months to get the bugs out and then make sure it works flawlessly. The you know the translation layer works really well. And I want to see are the game developers. I mean, and I'll tell you, Microsoft, you're the largest game developer on the planet now with all your acquisitions. Yep. Now, are you gonna embrace it and say, yep, yeah, hey, here's the iterations for the exact same game, whether you're on ARM or you're in the Intel world. Not a translated one, an actual installed native ARM game. Nothing. So, yeah, you know, I, I guess I would challenge Microsoft to say we're going to lead the charge there. Nothing because you know we just bought every game developer on the planet. Nothing. Um, and if they don't do it, I don't know. That's again, you're not eating your own dog food. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. I want to see how that plays out over the next year, especially with the new Xbox release. Well, rephrase the refreshed xbox that'll be a cylinder so i'm not sure how they're going to name that one but who cares um, but no tell us leave your comments down below let us know what you're thinking um we've we've got ideas we, we we've got some speculation around it but i i think apple is i'm worried they're going to go back to the power mac series way back in the day and yes that's dating me to the nth degree um they need to become something else again yeah, I'm not sure where Apple's next step is. I mean, you know, the, the the innovation and, you know, okay, you can, if you want to kill me in the comments about Vision Pro, yeah, innovative, sure. Knowing for who uh, beats Useful? me because, you know, much. there's only so many people that can afford to buy that. Knowing so until that makes an iterative turn to a, you know, $1,500 or less, I don't see that as a mass adoption. Um, you mean showing you know, my imitation of a, a Vision Pro? Yeah, I know. that's just it. I mean, it's <laughs> now I gotta wipe my forehead off of that. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't get that. But so I mean, the innovation to me is starting to reel back towards Microsoft. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't believe me, go look at their stock. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Um, you know, it's definitely with Nvidia. Go look at their stock. Nothing, and uh, you know that's where the proof is in the pudding. Is that you know both of them are they are eating their own dog food right now, um, and you know only one of them is coming up as new and improved flavor. <laughs> yep. So uh, I, I don't know. Stop. Um, I guess we'll see. No, I, I'm I'm also afraid that you know Tim Cook is ready to exit stage left, and uh, we'll see who gets stuck with this mess to say how do I turn Apple around into the next wave? Because uh, Microsoft certainly did that. Now it took bring, them ten years John to get I, there. Bring Johnny Ive back. That'll hopefully make things better. Yeah, maybe. Now, if I were Microsoft, I'd just go hire that guy right now. And, uh -huh. <laughs> shove him into that surface group nothing yep. let him do his thing but yeah again that's not me and uh, i'm definitely not paid in that vein whatsoever <laughs> and then, so <laughs> yeah, i gotta wait for the next deal to come out from best buy yep all right all well thank you very much for sticking with us hopefully uh you know again if you were tired in the middle of this you pulled over caught some naps and you caught and started joining joining us again nothing but uh, again you'll see more of these podcasts coming out in the long form at least uh, once content. a week and you'll start to see some more unboxings from uh, Dave here uh, throughout this week, Nelly. And uh, hope, like I said, I'll try to get off my butt and uh, help Dave out and put out a, a video or two of myself. So, uh, you know, join us in the comments, subscribe. Nelly. We really appreciate everybody jumping on and joining us for the conversation. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, all.